One caveat before we get into the video on this marble dial San Martin GMT. This is one of the most reviewed AliExpress available watch ranges on YouTube, and for good reason. So, I've gone out of my way to avoid any other videos on this model, to try and give my own, hopefully unique, perspective. We're going to look at the model in depth, to try and decide if this is a keeper for the collection, or something that needs to find a new home on eBay. If you're a subscriber to the channel, you may have seen this watch featured briefly in my State of the Collection video, and you'll also have seen that this is not the first San Martin model that I have owned. Last year, I bought a World Timer model, and while the quality to cost ratio was incredible, I just wasn't a fan of the confusing handset. But what that watch did for me is create a trust and interest in the brand moving forwards. As a part of that video, I also discussed my Grand Seiko GMT, which is a watch that I love, but one that to my mind is a little too expensive for me to be comfortable wearing very often, given its particular purpose. I apologize to those in the know, but given the nature of this San Martin model, I do think it's pertinent to go over the GMT complication so that we're all on the same page. A GMT watch generally has two features, a fixed bezel with a 24 hour track and an extra hand, usually in the style of an arrow and often with a differentiating color so that it stands out from the other hands. This hand moves around the dial once every 24 hours and can be set independently to allow you to track a secondary time zone. This means that it's particularly useful for travel, but also coordinating with overseas business connections. It isn't a perfect solution, as some time zones are offset by 30 or 45 minutes rather than an hour, and not all models are designed to cope with oddities like that. For me, I get the most benefit out of GMT models while abroad, and travel is just a bigger passion of mine as horology. That's where the issue with the Grand Seiko comes up. The places that I visit aren't always familiar to me or necessarily the safest places, and I don't always feel comfortable wearing something that expensive to those destinations. That's where the San Martin comes in for me. It's an inherently affordable GMT watch, you don't have to sacrifice a huge amount of quality, and if the worst does happen, it isn't something you'd remotely consider risking your life over. San Martin tends to draw some very favourable comparisons when it comes to finishing. I don't necessarily think it's fair to compare my Grand Seiko with the San Martin, especially as one is basically box fresh and the other is pre-owned, but I would say that there is a gap, and the Grand Seiko is noticeably better overall, but it's closer than it has any right to be given the RRP of both of these watches. With the San Martin, most of the surfaces have a brushed finish, with the bevels offering a sharp contrast with their polish. I think this is let down ever so slightly with the bracelet, not in terms of quality, but all the links are brushed on top and polished on the sides. As there are no bevels here, it doesn't quite match the watch perfectly. I think a five link bracelet with polished micro links might have been a better shout, but it's a very minor gripe. Hopefully that clearly conveys my reasoning for getting this San Martin GMT, but there were a lot of choices when it came to the dial, and I wouldn't be surprised if I've gone for the least popular option here. Certainly, from the thumbnails I've seen on YouTube in my recommended section, the other gemstone dials, Adventurine and Lapis, are more common, and the prevailing trend seems to be to go for one of the wave dials. The marble dial doesn't feature anywhere near as much, but it appealed to me because it's something I've not had in my collection before, whereas I've had other gemstone and wave dials previously and wanted to try something new. I would just add that I think they're all viable options, and you should just go with whichever one takes your fancy. When I first unboxed this model, the dial was the first thing that caught my eye because my particular watch doesn't have a great deal of marbled seams running across it, certainly very little compared to the advertising material. That does effectively mean that each watch dial is unique and you aren't going to know what your watch will look like until it arrives. I was initially a little disappointed, but I've owned this watch for a couple of months now and it's really grown on me. I've also noticed some more subtle features to the marbling that aren't immediately obvious to the naked eye. It isn't a pristine white surface, there are different patches of coloration that you'll only pick up on over time. On reflection, I also think the planar dial actually makes the watch feel a little smarter and more formal, while still offering a little of that visual experience. That might sound like pure copium on my part, but I really mean it, I think the effect could be quite overpowering if there were too much of it going on. 
One thing that is certainly true is that the other gemstone versions are going to be easy to tell the time with at a glance, as they offer a lot more contrast than this model does. To those in the know, it won't come as much of a surprise that this range is a homage, given that San Martin are famous for copycat models. They've tried to branch out a little more recently, even starting their own sub-brand for original designs in their domestic market. Not exactly a roaring success design-wise, but there are a few original models in the San Martin lineup that I think are pretty solid. The brand new SN0116 models spring to mind. It's difficult to be truly original in the dive watch space, but the colorways certainly stand out. The GMT range itself is based on the Grand Seiko SBG E285. It isn't an exact copy, given the proprietary nature of the spring dive, it was never going to have a power gauge, and the handset and dial options are different, but it is still inherently recognisable as a homage. Having said that, far fewer people are going to recognise it as such because it isn't based on a model that has captured mainstream attention in the way a Daytona, Submariner or Speedmaster has. One thing that the San Martin range has over the Grand Seiko on which it's based for me is sizing coming in 2mm smaller in diameter at 39mm. It isn't exactly dainty though, the complication adds a little thickness. All in this is 13mm thick and the lug to lug is 46.5mm, so it wears a little larger than the 39mm might indicate. I've mentioned in previous videos being a fan of smaller dials and the indented minute track means that this watch does deliver on that. For me it's very well proportioned when looking at it face on. It is worth noting that if you take the crown guard into account, the diameter of the watch is 41mm, so it's definitely one that is a little bit deceptive in terms of sizing. When it comes to specifications, the watch falls into a difficult price point in my opinion. It certainly isn't bad, boasting sapphire crystal with AR coating, stainless steel construction, BGW9 blue light loom, the new San Martin adjustable fly clasp, 100 meters of water resistance and an NH34 movement. If this had a different movement and Swiss made on the dial, the price point would be magnitudes higher, but it isn't. And the truth is, there are other brands who sell their wares on AliExpress that offer similar specifications for considerably less. One reason I felt comfortable with the extra outlay for this range is my previous experience with the brand. The countless positive written and video reviews of San Martin aren't a work of fiction. The quality of finishing and the build quality is better than anything else you're going to find on AliExpress. I've reviewed a number of models from the most well-known brands at this point. I've tried homages, original models, tourbillons and mechanical chronographs and none have come close to this. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that this may well be the best quality watch you can buy from AliExpress with the potential exception of some more considerably pricey models from Seeger Design. Now that is another point of consideration. San Martin are not just an AliExpress brand. They have their own stockists around the world as well as an international website. So while the sale prices on AliExpress might seem immediately appealing, the San Martin site also has its own significant sales. And if you buy from the EU or UK warehouse stock, you won't necessarily be paying AliExpress fees, shipping costs or import taxes depending on your location. Taking all costs into account, the cheapest model in the GMT range that I could find was coming in at $265 for me in the UK, but clearly that price is going to fluctuate quite a lot based on sales promotions and where you're buying from. As far as wearing experience goes, there's a fair amount of adjustability afforded to this watch thanks to that adjustable fly clasp. It is comparatively heavy though, with all the available links this weighs in close to 145 grams. When you add that to the 13mm height, you're not going to forget that you've got this on in a hurry. So at the end of the day, when your wrists have swelled up, the ease of adjustment on the bracelet becomes a real plus point. To conclude, I'm definitely going to be keeping this watch in my collection. I wouldn't go so far to say permanently, but certainly for the foreseeable future. It has a unique use case in being a watch I'm not afraid to travel with, but one that doesn't compromise on quality to achieve that. It also has an interesting dial, clean aesthetic and excellent finishing fit and build quality. The only reason I wouldn't commit to this watch being a lifetime keeper is that San Martin have a habit of consistently upgrading their models over time. And I wouldn't rule out switching further down the line, particularly if they release a thinner version. 
On a side note, I would also consider upgrading this particular watch to a five link bracelet with polished micro links if a bespoke one were available, as I do think that would elevate the look a little. I'm keen to know your thoughts on this watch in the comments. If you wouldn't keep it, what budget GMT model would you look to instead? As ever, thank you for your time. If you've enjoyed what you've seen or found it informative, consider dropping the video a like and subscribing for more content like this. Thank you.